doggy DNA just bust this case wide open. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kennedy. If you're new here, if you're not new, hey girl, how have you been? Welcome back to the channel. I thought I heard something. Welcome back to another true crime and makeup video here on the channel. We did that no makeup makeup look that I was telling you guys about in the last video with all the products. I also did like a super quick brief Sephora haul because I bought too much stuff for us to sit here and talk about everything. Okay. But if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to join the family. There's so many of you guys that are new. So hi. I briefly feel the need to like introduce myself because we're starting to grow a little bit faster. We are super close. My phone died. We're about 200 subscribers away from 25,000 subscribers. Hopefully the next time I sit down to talk to you guys, we will have hit that and we can celebrate. But thank you guys so much for subscribing. And so today we are in the kitchen with Every Plate. Shout out to Every Plate for sponsoring today's video. Every Plate is a meal kit delivery service that is 25% cheaper than going to the grocery store. You can count on Every Plate to help you get in a quick and easy meal after a long, hard day of work. With their pre-packaged, pre-portioned ingredients, you only pay for just what you need and you only have just what you need in the fridge. So you don't have extra ingredients in the fridge laying around and going bad. Today, we are making these stuffed pork burgers and they are so yummy you know my son always has a blast with me in the kitchen he absolutely loves to cook and he chose to do the pork burgers first because they're just new and fresh something we hadn't had before and that's the good thing about every plate they offer so much variety you'll never get stuck cooking the same old thing with over 25 meals to choose from every week as well as sides and desserts you'll have plenty to choose from and what's most important to every plate is bringing you guys an easy quick meal kit that is also affordable and if you would like to try out every plate for yourself, you can get a dollar forty nine per meal by going to everyplate.com and using code Kennedy Myers one four nine. I'm sure you guys can tell that we just absolutely had a blast in the kitchen. Having everything pre-portioned and the recipe card laid out in front of him, he feels so comfortable and so confident in the kitchen. And I feel comfortable enough to step back and let him do his thing with a little bit of help, of course. <laughs> but he gets so excited whenever the meal kits get delivered. He wants to bust open the box and see what's inside and get cooking right away. I highly recommend every plate as a way to quickly get into the kitchen, get your kids into the kitchen. And one more time, you can get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and using code Kennedy. Myers 149 and thanks to every plate for partnering with us on today's video. That was so good. Like I said, my name is Kennedy. I do true crime and makeup here on this channel. You may have seen me on TikTok and Instagram baking cakes and cooking food. And we also have a cake and cooking channel here on YouTube as well. It's not all dark and spooky and mysterious. I am a bad Boop. first. <laughs> And we are true crime baddies over here. My girls will let you know in the comments. So if you too would like to be a true crime baddie, make sure you subscribe before you leave. And we're gonna hop into today's case. Bye guys. I'm mad at y'all because I was trying to be good and not do the most for the Sephora sale. But y'all, where's the haul? Where's the haul? We're gonna get a haul. I bought way too much stuff to give you guys like a full haul. Piece of lint. Like, I would feel like I was holding you guys hostage before the video even started. But what I am gonna do is briefly touch on the things that I've bought that have stood out to me so far. The new Sol de Janeiro, this smells like replicas. Beach walk smells amazing. Um, the Coconut Sun Seven Virtues also smells amazing. Coconutty lasts a long time. Y'all know I always buy my sheet mask. For those of you that have been asking about my hair and humidity, I've got the Color Wild Dream Coat Spray. I was using like the smaller one, like I got the small one first, totally ran through it, I love it. So I got the big one, the Kenra Blow Dry Spray. I use that with this, perfect. 
more sheet mask. The St. Bart's body cream. I was telling you guys that I really like the body cream and the pistachio yum whatever perfume mixed together. I got another body cream because believe it or not, I'm all damn. I'm almost out of the one I already got. I also got the shower gel. And it's okay. Like, it's a shower gel. It doesn't do anything life-changing. I think it's like 30 bucks. Definitely would skip the shower gel if I were you. But the body cream, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. This is all the stuff that that girl used in that video that I showed y'all in the last True Crime and Makeup video. Um, I'm... I was gonna say I'm not in a no-makeup makeup mood today. But I guess we get... Like, yeah, let's do that today. We'll do the no-makeup makeup today just to give it a whirl. I also got the Patrick Star One Size Setting Powder just to try that. So let's just do a full face of that um, TikTok that we might as well. Might as well, we're already here. I think it just looks so good because the skin is super hydrated. Like I'm gonna go in with my moisturizer. Then this Refi Primer is really dewy. And then she went in with the Glow. And then she went in with the Tinted Moisturizer. So let's see. All right guys, so for today's case, we are in Hubbardston, Michigan. So today's case is centered around Miss Bernita Cunningham. Miss Bernita went by Billy, so we will call her Billy. And in 2006, Miss Billy was 80 years old and she was living alone. Her husband had passed. She was becoming like accustomed and used to being a widow. She was the type of woman who like was very attentive to her husband cooked all his meals, took care of everything around the home. So it was hard for her to like, you know, get her footing and figure that out as after her husband passed away. She was also a mother of seven children. And even at 80 years old, she still got around. She was very active and she liked to do things for herself. She kept her house very clean and organized and she liked to decorate for Christmas. She was a very able-bodied, independent woman, even at 80 years old. So in late 2006, around the 1st of December, when her neighbors felt like they weren't seeing Billy as much as they usually did, they called into her children to check on her. So one of her sons and his wife went to the home to check on her. And when they arrived to the home, they found Miss Billy dead. Now, they're not really freaked out and panicked um, because, you know, she's an older woman and from the looks of things, it looked as though she had fallen. Like she had been up on a stepladder that was near her body. She had fallen from the stepladder and it looked like she had hit her head, which oddly enough just happened to... Um, one of my great aunts. She passed away, her funeral is Saturday, but I mean, she lived a long, long, beautiful life. She was in her 90s. But this case definitely stuck out to me and that's why we are talking about it today. But it's kind of a graphic scene because it looked as though when she had fallen, she had disturbed a mirror that was on the wall. And this mirror like tumbled down with her. Maybe she fell on top of the mirror, but the mirror was, was shattered. And they think like in the struggle of her trying to like pull herself up, she's got this head injury, she's groggy, she's reaching through this glass. So the scene was kind of bloody. She had suffered several cuts. They believed to be in the struggle of trying to get herself my camera cut off but i think i was saying like in the struggle of trying to get herself up off the ground they think is how she got all these cuts and bruises and unfortunately she was just never able to you know get up but police and everybody they come out so she's found in like the entryway of her home and they think she was up on this little step stool hanging christmas decorations as she always did so upon first glances detectives they come in they look at the scene like I said before, just to reiterate, they felt like she fell from the stepladder, fell on top of the mirror or with the mirror. And as she's trying to pull herself up, get herself up, she's cutting herself on the glass that's on the floor. And they determine her cause of death to be an accident. But obviously, if there was no funny business going on, you and I wouldn't even be here, okay? So let's get into the suspiciousness of it all. Now, right off the bat for her kids, they didn't think their mother would be up 
on this little step ladder. in a compromising way to begin with because while she was independent and she liked to do things for herself, she wasn't crazy, okay? And she wouldn't risk taking a fall with no one around. Like she was very careful in that way. So right off the bat, her kids just didn't think that she would put herself in that type of situation. And then once the medical examiner gets the body in and they're looking at it more closely, she pretty beat up she's got a broken cheekbone cuts to her neck cuts to her arms um wounds on her hands that could be considered defensive wounds but it seems as though they're just like hell-bent on ruling her death an accident probably because she's older there was no signs of forced entry or anything like that in the home where her Friends and family, her children said that she always kept her door unlocked. She lived in a pretty safe area. She knew all her neighbors and she didn't feel as though she needed to keep her door locked. But obviously because her death was ruled as an accident, you know, there's no investigation. But as Miss Billy's children looked around her home, things just progressively did not feel right to them. Another big thing that stood out to them is that their mother, she always kept some cash in her purse. And it's because her husband used to fuss at her to do so. Keep some cash in your purse just in case something happens. About 50 to to $100, you know, you need to have a little bit of cash. So even after, you know, her husband's passing, she still held up this promise to him and she kept cash in her purse. When they went to go look in her purse, there was no cash. And it's crazy how little things like that stand out to the people who know you best, but this was alarming you know to her family and it was just the little things that are out of place and it's just I, I don't know it's just this case stuck out to me because her kids are just so attentive and that like just speaks to how close they were as a family and it's ultimately going to be the reason why you know we get anywhere in this case but they also noticed that one of her christmas statues She's a figurine person, which is crazy because my grandma was like that too. And my mom even likes the little like Christmassy angel figure figurines. One of her favorite figurines, it was a Santa Claus kneeling over a manger. It was out of place. It was kind of thrown across the floor and broken, nowhere near where it was supposed to be. It was broken because from what they could tell, it had flown into the wall or hit the wall some kind of way. And it was a dent in the wall that wasn't there before. And as well as the dent in the wall, they thought that was made by this statue. There was also like an elbow kind of dent looking thing in the wall near where she fell that wasn't there before. And they're thinking, well, if she fell on top of this mirror, how would this dent get in the wall? And so, you know, from the trained eye of her kids who knew their mom, knew how she kept her house. They felt as though somebody else had been in the house. And so they pressed this issue with the local sheriff's department, but they don't budge. They leave her death ruled as an accident. But her family did not take a no from the sheriff's department as defeat. And they decide to hire their own private investigator to look into things for them. So the private detective, he takes a look at the scene and he believes Miss Billy's family that the house was kept up in the way that she just wouldn't keep it. He also felt that it was an alarming amount of blood in the house for what the police had said happened or theorized that happened. So the first thing he decided to do, which I cannot even believe the police didn't do, is go out and talk to neighbors. And as he's talking to neighbors, he's talking to neighbors, a name keeps coming up and this name is Justin Stevens. Justin Stevens is a 17 year old boy who is new to Hubbardston. He had just moved to Hubbardston from Texas and he seemed to be somewhat of a troubled kid, maybe in and out of trouble. He was in Texas living with his girlfriend's family he was not enrolled in school and it seemed like everybody in the area was just weary of him. Like he just wandered around looking for trouble. Even to the point where the women who lived near Miss Billy, they would all call each other on the phone. If they saw Justin walking one way, 
they would say hey he's headed your way like make sure you're inside if you don't want to talk to him like steer clear nobody got good vibes from justin and not only does the private investigator learn that basically the whole neighborhood had been weary of Justin, they also learn that on the day of her death, one of the neighbors said that Miss Billy had told them that early that morning, Justin had stopped by her home. Earlier that day at around 10 o'clock, she had coffee, Miss Billy had coffee with the neighbor. And during this little coffee date, Miss Billy said that he had stopped by our house and asked to use the phone and she let him in. He made a phone call, but nobody answered. He kind of lingered around a little and asked if he could help put up her Christmas decorations, but she declined and he left. And then later that day, she was found dead. And this is alarming in and of itself, but when they go back and look at police reports, the police had actually talked to Justin at his home or at his girlfriend's house. And Justin said that he had never even met Miss Billy before. Red flag, red flag. But the private detective does what needed to be done. The things that he found, he brought it to the police department and they decide to pick the case back up. And the detective with the Michigan State Police is assigned to Miss Billy's case but they're not yet treating it as a murder investigation. They're just agreeing to look into it further. So the new lead detective assigned to the case, after looking at crime scene photos, he decides that he wants to go to Miss Billy's home. He wants to see it in person. And as he's looking at things and seeing things for himself, he's even more convinced that this was not an accident. He felt as though there was just too much blood at the scene for this to be an accident as well as the fact that where she was found in the foyer was so in such disarray compared to how she kept the rest of the house and while to some it might not have looked like a you know a bloody brawled out crime scene in comparison to how miss billy kept her whole home so pristine not a hair out of place the things that were out of place in this foyer were a big deal. So the new head investigator calls in to crime scene technicians and he wants to know because at this point it's almost been a month and a half since Miss Billy passed away. If it's too late for crime scene technicians to come in and take a look at the home and collect evidence, but it's not too late. Crime scene technicians come out and they collect evidence, they collect DNA. They collect a lot of the blood samples because they feel as though if Miss Billy was attacked, her attacker's blood was probably also mixed in at the scene. But processing all of the evidence found at the crime scene was gonna take a while, especially because Miss Billy's home was never treated as a crime scene. You know, people were in and out those first couple of days. So in the meantime, the lead detective, he wants to look more closely into Justin Stevens. So they bring Justin Stevens in, they check him out, they question him a little bit. Um, they wanna see if he has any cuts or anything on his hands, but again, it's almost two months after the fact, so there wouldn't be much of that left over. They, however, wanna give him a polygraph test. And he agrees, but when the time for the polygraph test comes, Justin has like a sinus infection, a cold, and apparently that can affect the results of your polygraph test. They schedule the polygraph test for a later date, and when it comes time for the second polygraph test, he is sick again. So he can't take the second polygraph test either, and before they can schedule a third polygraph test, Justin disappears. It doesn't take them long to catch up with him. He had moved back to Texas. Secondly, detectives want to update Miss Billy's cause of death. And to do so, they would have to exhume her body. So with the family's permission, they do exhume Miss Billy to get a second opinion on the cause of death. So at this point, we're eight weeks after Miss Billy's death and her body is exhumed and re-examined. So the second medical examiner, he says what was missed in the previous autopsy was the depth of the cuts that she had suffered from falling on this mirror. 
He said that he believed that the cut, she had three specific ones to her neck and then one to the side of her face. They were too deep for her to just have fallen on top of them and for the pieces of glass to not still be there. They, they wouldn't have just gone that deep and come back out. It had to have been some sort of stabbing. She had also received <clears throat> some blunt force trauma to her face the direct center of her face and some on the side of her face and it didn't make sense for like it would she would have had to fall in flat on her face to begin with which most people don't you brace yourself you don't fall flat on your face but then she would have had to get back up and then fall in just as hard again to hit the other sides of her face she had too many bruises too many stabs too many lacerations for it to be just one fall one impact it just did not make sense but like I said prior, it was most importantly to the second medical examiner, the depth of the stab wounds to her neck. And he believed that it was the glass found at the scene, but he did not think it was an accident. And the depth of those wounds on her neck are the part of the reason why she passed away so quickly. Like she had had that little coffee date with her neighbor earlier. By the time her family had gotten there that later that day, if this was like a fall there's no way she wouldn't have been able to survive until help got there because she was otherwise a healthy woman she had diabetes but that was it but the second medical examiner doesn't rule the death a homicide he just rules it as undetermined now they just don't at this point have enough to go after justin stevens and he's all the way in texas but another lead actually pops up for detectives Miss Billy was seen arguing with the man outside of her home. And this man was later identified as someone who had been incarcerated for attacking the elderly. This was something that they did. But ultimately this man is ruled out because he wasn't in the area at the time of Miss Billy's murder. Detectives also come across a, another young man who was in and out of Hubbardton sometimes because his grandma lived there he was actually brought to detectives eye from a neighboring county's sheriff department because he was kind of getting in trouble with the law he was one of those kids that was like really into serial killers and he wasn't shy about the fact that he was really into serial killers um he would often kill the neighbor's cat that kind of thing and he openly admitted to doing these things um he liked to stage crime scenes and take pictures of them but he was just strange he was also found to not be in the anywhere near hubbardston when miss billy passed away but eventually detectives get a lead on justin in texas he is arrested for trespassing because he's arrested for trespassing in texas that means detectives in Michigan can go down and question him. So they do head down to Texas, but since Justin is already in jail, he's already there, they decide to go out and talk to the people that he had been staying with while he was in Texas. He was living with one of his aunts and his aunt said that as soon as he got back to Texas, he gave her a bloody sweatshirt that he said was from hunting and he needed her to wash it. So she said at the time she didn't think anything of it, she washed it. And she also had a knife that Justin carried with him often and that he also had while he was in Michigan. So of course, detectives collect these things and they send them off to crime labs to have them processed and they go to talk to Justin at this Texas jail. So when they go and talk to Justin, he's already on the defensive because the police want to talk to him. But when he realized that he's talking to detectives from Michigan, he gets real tense. He starts to freak out. And his aunt also tells detectives, remember they talked to the aunt first, which was a great strategy, by the way, that Justin was seen with a $100 bill. Now remember, Miss Billy, she kept $100 or $50 in her purse. They're thinking that this was probably Miss Billy's money and his aunt just had no idea where he would get that kind of money. Remember he was 17 and he dropped out of high school so he would, he didn't have a job. He didn't have no business to be walking around with a crisp $100 bill. And so they ask Justin about this $100 bill and he tells them that his aunt gave it to him not knowing that detectives had already talked to his aunt. 
Mm -hmm. And so they lay it out to him right there. They say, well, we know that's not true because we already talked to your aunt. So try again, because you lying. But he just ends the interview. He goes silent and detectives don't press him any further because remember they got the sweatshirt, they got the knife. They also collected Justin's shoes that he wore into the jail. And they were also able to get a warrant for his DNA. So they were hoping that these things would help them in the investigation even though they were not able to get a confession out of Justin and they head back to Michigan. Um, so they have to wait for this evidence to be processed. So they decide to take a look at Billy and Justin's phone records from the day of the murder. And the crazy thing is, remember that um, Billy said he had came to her house to make a phone call, he had come in and said nobody answered. But when they checked phone records, there was no call made from her home at that time. And then when they looked at Billy's phone records, they could see that he was using the phone at the home pretty much all day, but there was a gap in between the time where he would have been at Miss Billy's house using her phone and then also another gap at the presumed time of the murder. So everything stalls until about 2000 and 10 when they can finally question Justin again because he is arrested again for possession. And this time detectives in Michigan they decide that they don't want to go out to talk to him that they think that they want um, detectives in Texas to talk to him. Maybe he would be more comfortable with them. He was in trouble with the law a lot so maybe he had built some type of rapport with the officers down there. And they're not really even looking for a full confession. They just want him to admit to even being in the house that day. That would be enough paired with all the circumstantial evidence that they had. So he's questioned by a Texas Ranger in Texas. And this Texas Ranger is able to break Justin down. But as Justin is seemingly about to confess to what he's done, he tells detectives that he needs to take a break and that he wants to call his sister. And it said that on this phone call with his sister, his sister says, shut your mouth. I'm coming to bail you out. Don't say anything else. And Justin listens. He shuts his mouth and he waits for his sister to come pick him up. The investigation stalls once again. Um, detectives, in the meantime, they take time to try to talk to all of the people that Justin was close to during the time, all his friends, family, that kind of thing. They want to interview everybody but it's crazy how like evidence takes just forever to be processed and they happen to get a lead on some of the evidence that was found in Miss Billy's home. There was a hair found that was determined to not be human hair. It was dog hair and Miss Billy did not own dogs. So this is confusing and alarming to detectives and they learned that at the time of the murder the house Justin was living in with his girlfriend they had three dogs. So they have to get the doggy DNA, literally they get the DNA from the dog hair that was found at the scene and they compare it to the DNA of the dogs that were living in the home with Billy at the time and the DNA is a match. The doggy DNA is a match. Doggy DNA just busts this case wide open. So they have the doggy DNA, which is amazing. It's a slam dunk. It's a step in the right direction, but luckily the... Texas Ranger who had interviewed Billy who had almost gotten him to confess he had promised the detectives in Michigan that if he ever got a chance to talk to Justin again he would do better he would try his hardest because he felt like he was this close to getting a confession and so the Texas Ranger is able to just like pop in on Justin check on check in on him again and he brings a pizza for Justin you know trying to get his guard down and he says they're just talking, they're chopping it up, and he just lets the conversation flow. And eventually the conversation leads to Miss Billy's murder. When they start bringing up Miss Billy's murder, the Texas Ranger, he's letting Justin know, you know, like poking at Justin's heartstrings, letting him know like the family really needs to know what happened. Not accusing him, you know, not placing the blame on him, but just saying out loud in Justin's ear like how the family just really needs to know what happened. The family is upset. You know, the family needs to know what happened to their matriarch. And he's able to get a confession out of Justin. So this is enough for Michigan detectives to be able to go down to Texas to bring him back to Michigan. You no, know, with an arrest warrant 
for the murder of Miss Billy. But what they want to do before they even get him on the plane, before he can get on the plane and listen to the white noise and have a change of heart, in the airport they set up a room, the detectives from Michigan, to talk to Justin and to get him to repeat this confession on the record, on tape, lay it out just in case he changed his mind. Later on, he got off the plane in Michigan and the cold air changed his life. I don't know. They just wanted to dot their I's, cross their T's, and in case if anything happened to the Texas Ranger, if he couldn't come to Michigan to testify, they needed to have their own confession. They pull him into this room in the airport and he tells them what he had told the Texas Ranger. And he says that on the day of the murder, he did go to Miss Billy's house and faked using her phone. He had been watching her. He wanted to check her out. He wanted to see the inside of her home. And he continued to watch her that day. He said he waited for her to leave and when she left, he went to her home, went in her purse, took her cash, but before he could leave, she was back. Miss Billy was not afraid. She demanded that he sit down and have a seat and she was gonna call the police because what the f are you doing in my house? But instead of taking his lick and letting Miss Billy call the police, he attacked her. He said he grabbed something off of a nearby shelf and started to hit Miss Billy with it and it's presumed to be that Santa Claus statue. He says he didn't remember what it was. And then he says he remembered struggling with her for a while and then he blacked out and the next thing he remembered was being outside behind her house. There was a graveyard behind her house. He says he was in the graveyard covered in blood, but like the actual murder, he did not remember. So Justin was charged with what they call open murder in Michigan. which leaves it up to the jury to decide whether it was first or second degree, which ultimately will decide the sentencing. And in 2011, the case goes to trial. So the prosecution was not playing with Justin, okay? First thing they do is they bring the jury to Billy's home. They want them to see Miss Billy like in her element, her softness, how tidy she kept her home, and then the disarray that Justin had left it in. Um, he also took them where Billy found Justin in the house to where the actual murder took place, the time it would take them to get from here to there, the time Justin had to think about what he was gonna do. They also put Justin's sister on the stand and she breaks down on the jury stand saying that Justin called her right after the murder and confessed and she had been keeping this secret the whole time. And so the jury finds him guilty of murder in the first degree. So he was sentenced to life without parole and the sentence was appealed but upheld the first time. And y'all know a lot of cases like this were with minors. Their sentences were overturned in 2012 when the Supreme Court said it wasn't okay for minors to be sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. So his sentence was overturned. So he was waiting for resentencing again and he was resentenced again last year in October of 2022. And he was sentenced to 40 to 50 years. But he still also had to serve time for the home invasion sentencing. So this would put him he wouldn't be eligible for parole until 2050 a whole another 27 years from now and that would put him at being right at 60 years old getting out of prison and that is a wrap on miss billy cunningham's case um i think i wanted to do this case because like i said um my aunt just recently passed away and she was 90 years old and like it's not a stressful like boohoo crying crazy thing because she was able to live such a long peaceful life and i feel like justin took that from miss billy like she should have been able to die peacefully in her home in her sleep or surrounded by her children and he robbed her of that he robbed her children of that her grandchildren of that he robbed her neighbors of their peace and comfort in their home it's just totally unfair that is a wrap on today's true crime and makeup case no true crime TikTok today, but if you would like to be featured in a video, send me your true crime TikToks, Instagrams. It could even be news, local news, whatever you wanna do. You can send that in to me. You can send me in a video on how you feel about the little clip that you sent me, and I'll include that into the video for you guys. Um, how do we feel about the no makeup makeup? I like it, I like it, I like it. I feel like it probably looks like regular makeup, <laughs> but I like it.
Mm. I'm about to go take it all off because I'm about to get cozy and clean up and edit this video for you guys. Make sure you subscribe before you leave and I'll see y'all next time. Bye guys.